Good morning and welcome as we begin the second portion of the Torah, Noach. Eile toldos Noach. These are the generations of Noach. It's uh, chapter 6, verse 9 in Genesis. These are the generations of Noach, or liberally, more liberally, this is the story of Noach. Noach ish tzaddik, Noach was a righteous man, he was a tzaddik. Tomim hoya bidorosov, he was complete, whole, perfect in his generation. Es ha'alukim hisalech Noach, Noach walked with God. And this is a famous verse. Every one of the words in this verse are interpreted. Good morning again and again. Let's look at Rashi. Rashi, Eile told us Noach, Noach ish tzaddik. These are the generations of Noach. Noach is a righteous man. Now the question is, the Torah wants to tell us the story of Noach and the flood and the ark. Why do we need to know that Noach is a righteous man? So Rashi says, Hail vihiskirei, being that he mentions Noach, Eile told us Noach, these are the generations of Noach, Siper b'shivchei. So the Torah has to mention something complimentary, praiseworthy about Noach. Shenemar, as it says in Mishle, Shlomo HaMelech teaches us in Proverbs, Zecher, Tzadik, Livrocha, when you mention a Tzadik, you mention him for blessing. You mention a righteous person. You say something nice about him. Because speech brings out, reveals that which is concealed. Which is the reason why Loshon horror, gossip, is such a terrible sin. Because speech reveals that which is concealed. Zecher tzaddik, when you mention a righteous person, Lebrocha, you say something nice about him. Because speech reveals that which is concealed. That's one interpretation. By the way, there are many commentaries who comment on Rashi. And the Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, spent his life, among other things, commenting on Rashi. And on this verse, the Rebbe said, we learn here, Zecher, Tzadik Lebrocha, does this mean every time we mention a Tzadik, we have to say something good about the Tzadik? The Torah mentions Abraham, it doesn't say anything good about him. Yitzchak, Isaac, doesn't say anything good about him. Jacob, Moshe. Why, mapitom, why suddenly when we mention Noah, do we have to say something good about him? And to cut to the chase, the Rebbe explains, because the whole Chumash is saying good things about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. Noah is only a small section, so we want to, as we tell the story, which is a bad story, we want to start off by saying something very good about him. Whereas the other tzaddikim, it's all about good things about them. Dabarachar, another meaning. What does it mean when we say, Eile told us Noach? These are the generations, or this is the story of Noach. Or these are the children of Noach. Noach is tzaddik, Noach is righteous. If you want to talk about his children, you should say, these are the children of Noach, Shem, Chal, and Yapas. The answer is, She'ikir tell this aim, shall tzaddikim masim tevim. The main offspring of righteous people are their good deeds. Their children are secondary to their good deeds. Eile told us Noach. These are the offspring of Noach. The generations of Noach are his good deeds. Bidoros of in his generations. Yesh made abeseinu dershim eisei l'shevach. This verse some of our teachers interpret this as praiseworthy, as a compliment to Noah, that Noah, who lived in a rotten generation, was righteous. Koshkein, how much more so? Elohoya b'deir tzaddikim. If he was in a righteous generation, hoya tzaddik yeser, he would be more righteous. So this compliments Noah, even though he lived with a bunch of rotten people, he was still a righteous person. Yesh, and there are other commentaries, Der say, who interpret this, Lignai, in a negative way. Only compared to Noach's generation was he righteous. 
Lefi Dede Hayot Tzadik. Relative to his generation, he was righteous. Like uh, there's a beautiful Jackie Mason statement. The only way you want to feel young, everybody wants to feel young. The only way to really feel young is to hang around very old people. If you hang around very old people, you feel young. Noah was righteous because he hung around wicked people. Had he lived in the generation of Abraham, compared to Abraham, compared to Abraham Avinu, Noah would be a nobody. What was the hallmark of Abraham, of Abraham Avinu? Abraham Avinu walked the world and preached kindness and goodness and God, monotheism. Avram Avinu inspired the world. Avram Avinu was a teacher, a leader, a mover, a shaker. Noah, as we will learn, spent 120 years building an ark in his driveway. Why did he spend 120 years building an ark? Because God wanted that when somebody approached him and say, as Bill Cosby says, Hey Noah, what you doing in your driveway? He should say, I'm building an ark because God is going to destroy the world so that people should repent. So the question is, how many people repented? The answer is, nobody. Imagine if you funded an outreach organization and after 120 years, the results were zero. So that's why, relative to Abraham, who had thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of disciples whom he transformed into monotheists, Noah was no one. So therefore, had Noah lived in Abraham's time, we wouldn't be saying he's a tzaddik. And I'll have more to say about that in a moment. With regard to Avram, it says, before whom I walked, Noah hayatzarech sad l'samchay. Noach needed God to support him. Good morning, welcome. Noach needed a crutch. He had to hang on to God and walk with him. Avol Avram, but Avram Avinu, how you mischazik, o mahalach b'tzitkim he'elab, strengthened himself and walked in his righteousness on his own. His halach loshen over, this is past perfect. V'zel shemushin shaloshin, beloshin kovayd, b'shameshes lahabo, o loshen over beloshin echad. And Rashi gives some examples of the grammar. Sometimes it's futuristic, sometimes it's past perfect. Okay, let's look at the Balaturim here and then I'll add a couple of things. The Balaturim says that in this first verse, Verse 9, the word Noah is mentioned once, twice, three times. Eile told us Noah, Noah ish tzaddik, es holikim is halach Noah. In one verse, mentioned three times. So the Baal Aturim says that we learn from the fact that Noah is mentioned three times in this verse, that Noah saw three worlds, or in other words, Noah saw three eras. He was one of three people who saw three worlds. Who were these three people who saw three worlds? And what are the three worlds? The three worlds that Noah saw was the world before the flood, the world during the flood, and the world after the flood. And uh, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, Daniel, saw the first Beis Amigdash, the destruction, and he saw the second Beis Amigdash. And Job, Eov, saw his life before havoc broke out. He saw everything go down, and then he saw the renewal within him. So these are some of the teachings in the Balaturim of Noach, Noach, Noach. He also brings down, which the Zohar brings down, Eila told us Noach, Noach, 
Why do we have the word Noach brought down twice in a row? It could have just said, Ela told us Noach ish tzaddik, because Noach brought comfort and rest on high and brought comfort and rest here in this world. Noah brought a blessing to Hashem and a blessing to the world. There's a beautiful talk which the Rebbe gives. And the Rebbe asks a very simple question, as was his custom. He asked what, what he called klotzkashes. Simple, powerful questions. The word klotz means a beam, a two by four. It's like the question hits you over the head. Ela told us, Noach, says Rashi, Noach was a righteous man in his generation. But had he lived in Abraham's generation, he would be nobody. So the Rebbe asks a simple question. We look at history. We look at the times and the dates. And we see that Abraham lived in Noach's generation. And Noach lived in Abraham's generation. In fact, if you want to know how old Abraham was when Noach died, he was Kiminyan Noach. He was the amount which makes up the numerical value of the word Noah, 58. Abraham was 58 years old when Noah died. So what are you talking about when you say, if Noah lived in Abraham's generation, he'd be a nobody? He did. He lived in Abraham's generation. People lived very long back then. I think they took Geritol or something. So to cut to the chase, the Rebbe explains. Noah's life, which we talk about here, is way before Abraham. Even Avram Avinu, Abraham, who lived for 58 years during the old age of Noah, Avram Avinu, Abraham, wasn't Abraham when he was 58 years old. The career, the generation, so to speak, of Avraham Avinu, of Abraham, did not begin until the beginning of next week's portion. Lech Lecha. God said to Avraham, Lech Lecha, go, go to Israel, be with friends. How old was Avraham Avinu then? 75. So that Avraham Avinu's career began at 75. When Noah died, Avraham Avinu was only 58, and he was not renowned as the, Abra the Abraham that we know, that's to cut to the chase. I, I, have to, I know this is a Chumash and Rashi class. It's not an in-depth class. But I must take another moment and point something out. And that is that Hasidus, the teachings of Hasidic philosophy, are replete, are filled with the theme that we all face the floodwaters of, of Noah, the May Noah, the tidal waves of the flood. Based upon the verse, Mayim Rabim Lo Yuchlu Lechabos Esa Ahavo Hagdola, that raging waters cannot extinguish the great love that a Jew has to God. What are the raging waters? So the Alter Rebbe explains in Torah Or, and this is explained by every Rebbe in every generation in his teachings of Hasidus, that the raging waters of Noah are the trials and tribulations, tirdot haparnasa, trying to make a living. Economic worries. We become inundated and overwhelmed with economic worries. We're freaking out. Times are tough, and times are always tough. And when times are not tough, that's when you're really worried. So we feel that the floodwaters are going to get us. What does Noah tell us? Noah tells us in order to survive a flood, you have to enter into an ark. The Baal Shem Tov teaches. The word teva means an ark. The word teva also means a word. That by the Jew entering into the words of Torah, by having regular Torah classes, by the Jew entering into the, word, into the word of prayer, by having regular prayer sessions, we can actually enter into the ark which protects us and gives us strength and anchors us so that we be tied down to the foundation so that we not be carried away by the floodwaters of Noah. Because when the going get tough, gets tough, the tough get going. You have to really be anchored down. 
And that happens through entering into a world of prayer and Torah study so that we can survive the floodwaters of the rat race of life. Again, that's in a nutshell. Verse 10. Noach shlosha bonim. And Noach fathered, he begot three sons. Es shame, es chom, es yofes. These are the names of the son. Shame, the word Semite means descendant of shame. The Jews are called Semites, the Arabs are called Semites, descendant of shame. Es chom and es yofes. Those are the three sons of Noah. Verse 11, And the land became very corrupt before God. It was a free-for-all. Everybody did whatever they wanted to do. And the world was filled with violence. You had pirates and terrorists and all kinds of stuff. Red flag warnings. 11, vatishoches, vatishoches means total corruption, moral corruption, loshen erva. This means immorality in the world of intimacy as well. Vave desar as well as pagan idol worship. Kemei pentash chison, that's an expression that's used warning about idol worship. Vatimole ha'oretz chomos plus people began to hurt each other. Gozel, they began Stealing from each other. Robbery. It was a world filled with uh, Ponzi schemes. It's a numerical value, Ponzi scheme. Just kidding. Okay. Verse 12. Yar Elikim Esoretz, and God saw the earth, Vihine Nishchosa, and behold, it had become totally <coughs> immoral. Kihishchis Kol Bosser, as Darke Al Oretz, because all flesh had corrupted their ways upon earth. There was a total corruption. Everybody did everything. 12. Kihishchis Kol Bosser, Afila Behema Chaya Ba'if, even Animals, even birds, wild animals, domestic animals, Niskokin were having relations, were consorting Lishain and Minan with species that are not of their species. So that everything went. Verse 13, So God said to Noach, The end of all flesh has come before me. It's the end. Kimolo ho'oretz chomos mipneim, because the earth is filled with violence through them. Vehinani mashchisom es ho'oretz. And behold, I have decided I'm going to destroy the world. Rashi, keitz kobos, or kol mokem shatomeitzis nusva vedizora. Whenever you find immorality, sexual immorality, whenever you, in abundance, whenever you find idolatry in abundance, then an indiscriminate punishment overtakes the entire society. And kills people who are both good and bad. Let me just take a moment to comment on this. Obviously the flood didn't kill people who were good because Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives were not killed. So obviously people who were good were not killed. What does it mean when we say it kills people who are good and bad? Because everyone has a certain measure of sin. And until that measure gets filled, their punishment doesn't come. But when there's a mess like this, God punishes those who are evil, even though their measure has not become full yet. So from that perspective, they're still good. But people who are absolutely good, good morning, get saved in the, in the ark. So that's just a small comment. The final decree was sealed because people were hurting each other. As long as the sins were only immorality and idolatry was a half a problem. 
But when people began harming each other, then it was out of control. Es ha'oretz k'may min ha'oretz. From the daimer like it says, see es ha'ir min ha'ir chole es raglav min raglav. Davar achar es ha'oretz im ha'oretz with the earth. Sha'av gimel t'vachem shal eimek ha'machresha nimeichu v'nitashtashu because even the three hand breaths of the depth of the land were also dissolved and washed away. There is a uh, teaching that the word kates, which has the numerical value, kuf is 100 and tzaddik is 90 of 190, refers to the 40 days of the rain and the 150 days of the waters becoming stronger and stronger, 150 plus 40 is 190. Verse 14 so God says to Noah, I'll tell you what, make for yourself tevas atze gopher, an ark of wood of gopher, kin in various rooms, sections, tase, you shall construct as a teva the ark, vichafarta esa, and you shall pitch it and cover it, me bias from within, umi umi chutz, and from without, bakefer, with pitch. Rashi, asay lecha tevas, make an ark. The question is, if God wants to save Noah, there are many ways to save someone. Why an ark? Har be'rebach v'atzol of There are so many ways to save. Ve'lomar t'richa be'binyan zeh. Why did God cause Noah to work so hard to build an ark? It was a very tough job. The answer is, as I mentioned earlier, in order that the people of the generation of the flood should see Noah, Osigbo, engaging in this labor, Kuf, Chof, Shon, 120 years. We learned at the end of Dvorim in the Rashi, Be'etzem Hayom Hazeh, that the people during the time of Noah said, just wait, we see him going into the ark, we'll kill him. So that they weren't sure there is going to be a flood, there isn't going to be a flood. But this was the topic of conversation for 120 years. The O'Reilly factor was all about this Noah business and all the TV shows, all the magazine shows. Mishael and Isaiah, and they would ask him, Ma'zais Loch, what's this? And he would say, God is about to bring a flood to the world. And they would say, hey, Noah, what are you smoking? Come on, you're kidding. Look, the sun is shining. The intent was, Ula Yeshuva, perhaps they would repent. That's the name. Why this species? is Because of the sulfur. Because the world was destroyed not only by rain, not only by water, but by chemicals and specifically by sulfur. Talk of global warming. Kinim, medeirim, medeirim, separate quarters, the behema v'chaya, for every animal and every beast. It was like a moving zoo. Build me a moving zoo. Back, if you know that song. Bakaifer, zephes beloshen arami, pitch in Aramaic. Omatzinu betalmud kufra betebesh al-mesha. We find in the Talmud kufra in Moshe's basket. I they show you Amayim Tashim Moshe only needed a basket. The waters were slow moving. Daya Bechaymer Bebefnim was enough to get some slime from within. Vezevesi Bebechutz and keep the pitch on the outside. Veikidesh Leyeriach Eisit Tzadik Reich Rash Al Zephus. God didn't want Moshe getting sick from the smell. I'm going to choke from the smoke. Avol Khan, but here with Bechazek Amayim because of the powerful roughness of the water. Zofsa Mibayis Umichutz he covered it from. Within and from without. Now he says in 15, This is how you should make it. 300 cubits. There are various opinions. The most popular opinion is that a cubit is a foot and a half. So 300 cubits is 450 feet. It's like a football field, right? Shleish meyes amma, 300 cubits, eirech hateva, 
in the whole uh, Bill Cosby thing, at the end, God says, so Noah, you have any questions? He says, just one, Lord. What's a cubit? Chamishim ama rogba, 50 cubits wide, ushleishim ama kaimosa, and 30 cubits high. Now, if we can get our producer here to cooperate, we have this, as they used to say when I was a kid, this pitchker. This is from the Chumash, Shaila Mora. It's all in Hebrew, but we see that this is actually the ark. So we see at the very top, on the right, it says Tziur HaTeva, the shape, the picture of the ark, Lefi Pirush Rashi, according to the interpretation of Rashi, Kefi Shabiyarei Begur Arya, as the commentary on Rashi, Gur Arya explained. Uh, let's look at the very bottom, very bottom, where it says 50 Amo Reichavateva, 50 cubits is the width of the ark. So we see the width, very bottom of the picture. On my right, on the right of the picture, 30 Amo, the height of the Teva. Now, along the front side, Maybe it's difficult to see because it's shaded. It shows at the very bottom 300 amma, the length of the teva. So that's the 300 by 50 by 30. And then you have three floors. The bottom floor, midurim tachtainim, the bottom floor, lezevel. That's where they kept all the shmutz, basura. Shmutz basura was on the bottom floor which they ran, then recycled. I'm just kidding. The middle floors were where the animals lived. That was the zoo. That was the middle floor. And then you had the top floor was the people floor, the penthouse. And then we see that the top of the top floor becomes narrower and angles up to a point. And on the left side, we see it says, Tsiur Midas Piskas Gaga Hateva, the picture of the measurements of the roof, and we see it narrows down to one amo, to a foot and a half. On the right side, we have Amo Tchaleno Milmailo, and then on the left side, near the top, it says, Eleven amo hoisateva mishukas bamayim. That according to Rashi, the ark sunk into the water eleven amos, so that the floor of the garbage was underwater. This is some of the things we learn from this picture. You can also see the very top in the center of the side. In the middle, it shows the doorway. At the top, it shows the window. It's on the side, center. Second floor, you see the entryway. Top floor, you see the chalon, the window. This is some of the stuff you see in this sketch. Okay. We are in, uh, where are we? 16, right? Tzohar. Ta a window or a light you shall make for the ark. There are two interpretations. One interpretation is that there was a window which brought in light. The other interpretation is what good is a window going to do if it was black outside? And that is they had a precious stone which gave off light. At the top of the ark you narrow it down to one cubit as we just saw in the sketch. And the door of the ark you put in the side, as we just saw in the sketch. Three floors, the bottom floor for garbage, the middle floor for the animals, the top floor, the penthouse for the humans, for the, for the peoples. Sixteenth, so har. Yes, Amrim, one opinion says, Chaloina window. Yes, Amrim, and others say, Evan Tova, precious stone, Amir Lahem, which brought them light. I must pause for a moment and I must 
point out the beautiful teaching of the Baal Shem Tov, who is the father of Hasidic teaching. The Baal Shem Tov said, very often we find ourselves overwhelmed. We have Tsuris with a capital T. What's Tsuris? Troubles. You know, like yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. You know, that kind of troubles. Troubles, Tsuris. Wherever we look, we got troubles. Oy vey. You know the old saying, cheer up, things could be worse. So I cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. So the Baal Shem Tov said, we become frozen. We start popping Prozac. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And we're looking for solutions all over the place. Little do we know that the solution is in the problem. Because when God brings a problem, he brings a solution. So we take the word tzara, which is written tzaddik, resh, hey, the three Hebrew letters, which makes up the word tzara, trouble, and we jumble it, like the uh, LA Times jumble, and we have tzohar, a light. Suddenly the trouble becomes, the problem becomes a solution. Every crisis is an opportunity. And the opportunity is greater than the opportunity before the crisis. So says the Baal Shem Tev, the solution is there. Your perspective is flawed. You need to go to a teacher. You need to delve into the ark of Torah study. You need to delve into the ark of prayer and meditation. And you will find the solution to the trouble. That's from the teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. <speaking in Hebrew> Covering and slanted upwards. <speaking in Hebrew> until it's narrowed at the top. <speaking in Hebrew> and remains at a cubit. <speaking> in order that the water should roll off from each side. Why place the door on the side so that the rain not come into the door if it's up on top? Three stories, one on top of the other. The top for man. The middle quarters for the animals. The bottom for the schmutz. For the garbage. 17. Vani and I says Hashem, Hinini, I am about to maybe bring us a mabo, the flood, mayim of water, Allah orits upon earth, Lashaches to destroy Kol Basar all flesh, Asher Beiru Achaim, which has a breath of life, Mitachas Hashemayim from under the heavens, Kel Asher Baoritz Yigva. Anything on earth will perish. Seventeen Rashi Vani Hinini maybe Hinini Muchan Lahaskim and Meisim Shezerzuni. God says, I'm about ready <coughs> to agree with those who have warned me. The Omru Lefonai Kfarun already said to me when I created man, who said to me? The angels. They said, God, you're making a big mistake. Don't create man. All he's going to give you is heartache. Mo enesh kisis kirenu, as King David brings down in Tehillim chapter 8. What is man? Who is man that you make mention of him? You're mindful of him. Man is a big troublemaker. Man is just going to give you heartache. Or heartburn. Mabul. Why is it called Mabul? Shabila Sakel because it destroyed everything. Shabilbala Sakel because it confused everything. Shahibala Sakel because it brought everything down. Minagavaya the Namak from the heights to the lowest point. It says that the lowest point was Babylon. Today's Iraq. And everything just became one big junkyard <coughs> in Bovel and Mabul, Bovel, they all come from the same word. Bezev Loshen Unklus, Shetirgam Tufna, flood, Shehitzif Esakel, it flooded everything. Vevim Lebovel and brought it to Babylon, Shiamuka, which lies low. Lekach Nikar Shinner, that's why it's called Shinner, which means Mishmash. Shenina Rusham Kol Mesei Mabul, because all of the dead of the flood were collected in the valley of Shinner. There was one big graveyard of bones. 18, Vahakimosi es brisi When I was a kid, uh, 
they had the Lone Ranger. Remember the Lone Ranger? And Tonto and Kimosabi. We used to say Kimosabi. Akimosi, Kimosabi. Akimosi es brisi itoch, and I will establish my covenant with you. Ovosar lateva, and you, Noach, will come into the ark. Ato you, y'all. Ovonecha and your ninos, your children, v'ishtecha and your wife, onishevonecha and the wives of your sons, itoch with you. Why does he mention you and your sons and then your wife and their wives? It should say you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Because there was separation of the sexes in the ark, because the world was being inundated, there was no intimacy permitted in the ark. Separate quarters. Akimesi is brisi. The medrash says bris hayetzorech al apedes shelo yirke will be apshu. There was a special covenant from God necessary that the food not rot. How do you have a food supply for a year? Also, there was a special covenant necessary so that all the wicked people, as they see Noah and his family enter the ark, don't kill them. As again, we studied in Devorim, at the end of Devorim, in that Rashi, which talked about the three challenges that the Torah describes with the words in the middle of this day. Men separate, and women separate. Intimacy was forbidden during the entire time in the ark. 19, and from all of the animals, mikol basar of all flesh, shnayim mikol, two of each, tovi you shall bring el hateva into the ark, lahachis, to keep them alive, itach with you. The two should be one male, one female, so that they should be able to reproduce after the year in the ark. Even the demons had to be kept alive so that after the flood they can also keep coming. Minimum was two of the species. But we learn that the kosher animals, there were more than one and one. May ha'ayf lemineo, 20, from the fowl, the birds of their kind, the cattle, mikel remes lemineo, all the creepy crawly things, they took roaches and centipedes and all kinds of stuff. Shnayi mikel, two of each, yaveyo elecha, you shall bring to you lahachias to allow them to live. 20, may ha'ayf lemineo, eisim shedofka bimineo, the only animals or creatures permitted into the ark were those who had only associated with their own species. Anyone that had intimacy cross species was not permitted into the ark. Now the question is, how is Noah going to know this? What does he have, cameras up? From Homeland Security. The answer is, Rashi brings down from the Medrash, they came on their own. God led them in. God knew which ones they were. So how did Noah know which animals or which bugs or which birds were to go into the ark and which ones were not? Would they have like visas? If they were permitted to go into the ark and permitted to remain in the ark, then Noah says in that case it works because Hashem controlled this. If they didn't belong, they couldn't get in, and if they snuck in, they couldn't remain. So this was an automatic process. It was a divine process. Viato, and now God says to Noah, you better go to Costco. Kach lecho, take for yourself, mikomachol asher yochel, from every food that you can possibly think of. And gather it to you. It shall be to you and to the animals. You have to go to the pet food aisle. To eat because you need a year of food. Now anybody watching this on the internet is not going to appreciate this. But here locally we're going to appreciate that Noah didn't want to go to Costco. He wanted to go to Gelson's. Hashem said too expensive. 22, he had a company credit card. 
Bayas Noach and Noach did. Kechel Asher Tziva Yisrael Akim, everything that God commanded him, Kain also, so he did. Rashi 22, Zebinyan Ateva, it refers to the construction of the ark, end of today's Chumash portion.